Thank you, sir. I am going to invite Dr. Melvin White to say a few words. Thank you very much. It's um, really a pleasure to be here today with my husband. Uh, we've been now going on two years in Pakistan. And the thing that's made it such a remarkable experience for me is you, the incredible women that I've met here. Uh, I really do firmly believe that Pakistan's greatest untapped resource is its women. And your organization and the work that you do is changing that. And the world is starting to stand up and take notice. And so I'd just like to start by commending you for all the work you do, not just for yourselves and your families, but on behalf of the women of Pakistan and really the women of the world. So thank you very much for that. Um, the U.S. government is really committed to helping women. As my husband mentioned, it's one of the uh, pillars of uh, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, who all her life has campaigned on behalf of women. I work for USAID at our mission, and we have many programs that are helping women. I would just like to focus on one of them because I think it's one that is relevant to the work that so many of you do. I don't have to tell you that uh, Pakistan has a wonderful tradition of embellished work, uh, handwork, um, and uh, indeed I'm wearing a piece of it right now. <laughs> and uh, these, these products are so often sources of income for women artisans and, and their families. In fact, a World Bank study showed that uh, as many as 70, uh, 750,000 women in Pakistan already have micro-businesses that they're running um, involving embellished work, handwork, knitwear, that's bringing very precious resources to their families, which, as you know, often consist of many mouths to feed. Pakistan's women entrepreneurs, micro-entrepreneurs, are using their skills in other ways, too. They're beekeepers, and they collect medicinal herbs, and they raise chickens and sell eggs. There's many different things that women are doing in order to help their families uh, have food on the table. And all of these activities ensure that women with talent and initiative and perseverance, even those who are unable to take part in commercial activities outside of their homes, are able to bring precious financial resources to their families. So I'm very proud that USAID uh, is working on behalf of women micro-entrepreneurs in communities across Pakistan to help strengthen their business skills and forge links with more lucrative and sustainable markets. Through our Entrepreneurs Project, we help women embellishers fuse their traditional skills with modern designs that uh, appeal to the taste of urban markets, and uh, that's what we see here today. And the, these entrepreneurs are now producing a wide variety of bags and clothes and home apparel, things like that for, for use, not only here, but beginning to tap into international markets, which is really exciting for someone like me who knows how great it is. Um, I'd love to be able to walk into a shop in my hometown in, in the United States and find uh, something made in Pakistan for sale. That day may come. We're also helping the beekeepers. <laughs> Uh, and other women micro-entrepreneurs improve their uh, business skills, tap into markets, and we've offered some financial training to, to many, uh, as many as 70,000 women so that they know how to just do simple bookkeeping and, and price their products uh, realistically, which is very important. And then most recently, one project that I find very interesting and shows huge sign of success, uh, just as an example of how we're helping micro-entrepreneurs around the country, we've started to provide uh, women living in very remote and very traditional societies, communities in Baluchistan, we're giving them egg incubators so they can raise chickens, have eggs, which they're selling at local markets, and they're really starting to generate income for themselves and for their families. And as you know, that's really the first step for women to start taking a fuller role in, in helping to build this country. And I, and I think that step by step, all of you are going to be contributing to that. So during our time here, my husband and I have seen really remarkable examples of what you Pakistani women can do. We're really committed to helping to create a socially just and democratic and gender responsive society where the fact that one is a woman is not a hindrance, but it's an opportunity to run a solid business. I commend the IWCCI for the work that you do. We look forward to continuing to hear about the good things that you're doing on behalf of not just women, but Pakistan's whole economy. And thank you very much for having us here today, for arranging this beautiful display of your products, 
and we look forward to chatting with you all over time. Thank you, ma'am. Um, as you mentioned about Made in Pakistan, uh, the chamber was working with the Firm Straight project, and uh, we had a project name Made in Pakistan where like almost 90% of our members participated, and it was a big success where they were provided training on exports and how to uh, bring the products to international standards. So that was uh, really good technical assistance. Okay, with this, um, I would also like to share some of the success stories of the members that are here with us today. Uh, one of our oldest members is Ms. Nigar Nazar. Uh, she is a famous cartoonist and she is uh, the first cartoonist, in, women cartoonist in the Muslim world. And, uh, on her credit, and on her credit goes a famous character named Bogi. She is a female character that is used in a cartoons to portray uh, and to talk about all the social issues that we have. And uh, she has written around 15 comic stories and that are there at national and at inter international level. And then we have with us one of our oldest entrepreneurs, Ms. Uh, Shaheen Bey. She's the pioneer in working in the marble industry. She was the women pioneer to work in the marble industry. And she's been exporting to different countries, including the U.S. Then we have another uh, member, uh, Musarat Shaheen, and she's there for her handmade herbal products. So she's done a real good research on herbal products and handmade her herbal products. Then we have uh, a story of courage and struggle. A woman that got widowed 22 years back, and she was alone with her little daughter, and she fought with the traditional customs and today she's surviving. The one that you have witnessed, she's, she's a doll maker. She's the one who used her own materials, own cloth and reinvented a doll. And today she's successfully selling her cloth dolls all over the country. And then for youngest entrepreneurs, we have an example. Uh, she's the youngest entrepreneur in Dalapindi in Islamabad. She's engaged in the business of event management. On her credit, uh, there have been two uh, two events, two successful events goes to her credit, Naima, Naima Ansari. She's also a vice president. And uh, she's also the youngest executive committee member of the Federations of Pakistan, FBCCI. Okay, so now we'll start up with a question and answer session. Okay, any questions from the past? I make book projects for the U.S. Embassy, which were sponsored by the U.S. Embassy. And I have been to Colorado College as a, a Fulbright visiting specialist. And my question is a little different from the rest. No assistance, no support. My question is that I want to give something to the children, American children, and while I was there, I identified a memorial hospital for children, which was pretty newly built in Colorado Springs, where the walls were all blank. I've done three hospitals in Pakistan, wherein after a lot of research, it was found that if you make the, the environment child friendly, the medical cost goes down and the, the, the stay of every patient is lessened. So I proposed at that time over there, that I would like to give back something to the American children by donating my uh, cartoon murals, a little piece of Pakistan, to the Colorado Springs Memorial Hospital. The skins are ready, the designs are done, and now a big question is how do I get them over there? <laughs> I'm not going to frame them. <laughs> I can't. Usually. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me thank you for what you've done. Uh, and thank, you know, just the spirit of the cooperation among peoples that you foster, that is not just a question of being an entrepreneur here, but being a citizen of the world and, and uh, what you've done to contribute for our kids. Because we also have a child who's grown, who is the, uh, who suffered from a very serious childhood disease. And we know what it's like to be in a, uh, in a hospital where the ambiance makes such a difference, really to the survival of the kids. So we know what you're talking about. We think it's a great idea. And I think what 
you're talking about that is trying to figure out a way to get your items to the United States, I think that's the kind of thing we can take care of. I think that's the kind of thing. Now, I'm assuming these things are, are smaller than an airplane. Of course. Yeah, okay. okay. But uh, what I'd like to do is, please, we would be happy to figure out a way in our embassy to make sure that this gift from you to us uh, is gets to the United States. And in fact, it's something that I'd like to add, a spirit that I'd like to add. One thing that we notice is that, uh, too, sadly, too few of our Americans are coming over here. We have wonderful emissaries going to the States. We have a very large Fulbright, uh, yes, other kinds of programs that take your young students and your advanced students to the United States. But we need, this is our assignment, we need to make sure that more of our people, more of our students, more of our people who are cartoonists, more of our people who are in the health industries come here. Because the understanding, I think, of what Pakistan is and what Pakistan can do will only come not from the description of an ambassador or even from a Mrs. Ambassador, we try, but the real people who come is when we can have more ambassadors here, more people coming over. So that is also one of the long-term things we want to make sure we, we uh, foster. Your pictures on the wall in Colorado, I hope, will inspire people to come here to see where did that come from and to know where that friendship is. So thank you.